All right, guys, that was a problem. We didn't have enough pressure in that tank. Because listen now. Now we got some flame. Good morning, YouTube. We got Izzy and old Nala in here with me this morning, and uh, is we're running a little behind. Not behind. We've already been been uh, to the next town over and got a load of corn. We're gonna put some more steers on feed, but today, this morning, we're gonna pin the other steers. You know, we've taken a. Uh, the ones that Clancy had in his hand fed pen. We've taken those to the butcher already. And we've got five out here where he had his creep feeder. We're gonna push them up under the barn today and try to try to get them set up to where we can hand feed them because we're gonna bring in some more cattle and put out here where he's been doing this creep feeder. Um, the creep feeder did all right, but I wasn't real satisfied with that. So we're gonna go a different route. Let me Let me show you what we're gonna do. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to come in right here and I'm going to cut this kicker off of this H brace. Probably going to add about 20 foot of pipe fence. And then I'm going to put in some fence line feeders right here where we can hand feed these steers that will be out here in this little trap where we can hand feed them right over here but feed them from the outside. What my goal is is in the next few years is to get to where we're feeding enough cattle that maybe we can have a little feed truck of some kind um, instead of having to feed with buckets and things like that. But that's a couple of years down the road. But um, so Clance has got the got the lots set up, right? Right. Right. All right. So let me I'll flip y'all around here. That was very disappointing. The top is like crusted, but then just like you fall through. What Clance is talking about is this, we left these, the, the other cattle have been out of here for about a little over a week and uh, it looks like it's dried up, but it's still pretty boggy. And uh, that don't even hold, and I don't have any weight on it. Yeah. But it's cool with his jiggle. So, like I said, we really wanted this to dry out a little bit. Is it like that all the way around or just right here? That's only what about over there? Let's see. We've got some pretty good weather coming the rest of this week, so it should dry on out. Um, oh, I wanted to, I'm gonna scrape that off right quick with the tractor before we get, get those steers in here. So we better do that right quick. Hey, Clance. I wanted to scrape that off with the tractor right quick. We'll just wait till we get done with the steers. They're only gonna be in here for two weeks. So they're, those steers are only gonna be in here for a couple weeks. Um, they go on the 20th of February. Today's the 6th, so two weeks. So we'll scrape that off when they get finished and scrape some of this dirt out. We'll re repack it with some good material. So um, let's see, let me show you what we're gonna do. So, steers are right over here. This is the little wet weather creek that runs just when it's wet and raining. We're going to bring them up. We're going to, we're going to jump these that are on the, this side over here. We're going to jump them across the creek and then bring them up this fence line right here and then try to push them right into the lots right there. The only, oh, let's get back. The only issue with this plan is, is right in here where we're at, we normally put up a little wing, but we're not gonna mess that. We're gonna try it. So let's see how, let's see what kind of disaster we can have. Dad. Yes, sir. You go down this side, and once you get right here to the trees, you come right here and make sure they don't okay. come this way. I just wanna. All right, but I want to bring them real slow and easy. I don't 
if we just, I just really just want to let them walk and the see the hole. So what I was telling him is I want to bring them real easy. If we had our wing up there, we could just bring them on, but we don't have our wing up there. So um, we're just going to go real slow and easy, let them walk, give them a chance to find the hole, and then hopefully get them to, to walk in where they're supposed to be. All right, so let's go give it a try. All we can do is mess up. the creek big boy get on across there there we go now we got them where we want them Now some of you eagle eyes will notice that this one calf right here is a little slow, a little tender footed and he's got a maybe just a touch of founder but it's not so much that he can't move. Well guys, sorry I had to turn you off for the pinning but they weren't being very cooperative so uh, turn that off so you can listen to it. But, so we got these five pushed up here in the lots couple of them were being a couple of them wouldn't, wouldn't cooperate very good so Bob will you run over there and grab that towel that fell out of the buggy right over there out of by that old mineral feeder so <clears throat> so what we'll do now with these calves is they're gonna be on the same ration they and he just hot dogging that thing ain't he um, they'll be on the same ration that they, they were on outside, but instead of being on this bulk feeder or a creep feeder, whatever you want to call it, um, they're going to be hand fed for the last two weeks here. Um, what we figured out from watching these calves eat and watching their movements and everything is every time, every time you come out here to feed the cattle that were in this feedlot pen, they came right up and ate. Um, the ones outside on the creek feeder, which was these originally, they didn't, they didn't come up near as much, which that reflected in their average daily gains or cost of gains and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's the reason we're gonna put in the fence line feeder is because our thinking is, is if we come out there twice a day to feed them, that they're gonna come up to eat. <coughs> and, uh, so that, that's, that's what we're gonna do moving forward. And we're gonna put a few more out there. And I think we're gonna put, try to put 10 on feed um, this month. So these calves, getting them up here, putting them on this uh, hand feeding deal right here. Same, like I said, same ration, whole corn, beef trade, and some, some Sudan hay. Should get these calves, uh, you know, it's not gonna do a whole lot in 14 days. I mean, but it'll, it'll finish them off where like we want them to be finished. and. And they're in good shape anyways, but it'll just help us get, get there a little bit better. So um, I'm going to set you down, and we're going to go ahead and feed these boys. we got five calves in there, so we're going to put five buckets for right now and see, see how that does for them. here let you watch from over here for a minute that's your last one of those right
Now this hay, guys, will be something that's new for these calves because we didn't really provide them much roughage outside on the, because they had that pasture back there, there's some old dormant coastal and stuff like that. So this will be a little bit new for them here. Is that microphone recording? Yeah, there we go. All right, so now what we'll do, since these calves aren't used to sticking their head through here, I'm gonna go over on the back side of the pen and see if I can kind of push them up here a little bit, just to get them up here to see it and know what it is, and, and then they'll start going, going to town on it. Well guys, as you can see, the steers walked up and uh, they just went to eating, so that's a good sign. And uh, those two that, that or a growl. Yeah. Well, those two that we had to t had to really get after. We had two of them that didn't want to cross the creek, and then when they did, they wanted to run off. So um, once we got them, they're going to be a little bit slower coming up here. But we're going to drive off now and let them do do their eating and uh, go take care of some other chores. All right, guys. So the next part of my day today, actually, we got a pretty full day. So we got we went and got corn this morning, like I showed you, and then we get moved those steers around, and then I sent Clancy, and we, he's got to get a haircut today at dinner for some reason. I don't know why we scheduled it at dinner, but he's got to get his haircut. And then uh, the other thing we got to do is we're going to go look at some steers to put into to put back on feed, and so <clears throat> you may say, well, Cody, why do you, why are you buying steers? So the way our operation works, guys, on our place, we constantly change in our business model because we, we, we're I'm more than willing to try something, but if it's not profitable, I'm not going to continue to do it. So what we found is, is when we first bought this place nearly 19 years ago, 18 years ago, um, <clears throat> running mama cows year round, you know, just a cow calf operation, keeping cows, putting a bull on them, raising a calf and selling was not making us any money. We were we were breaking even or, you know, we were having a good time doing it, but that's not, you know, I've had plenty of practice running cows. I don't need to do it to, to just have fun. So we changed and we started running some stalker calves. So we'd buy some seven, 800 pound bull calves, castrate them, get them healed up, get them started on how to eat, get them over all their sicknesses, and then we'd send them to the feed yard and let's, we'd sell them to a feed yard. We did that for a few years. And then we transitioned into buying and selling replacement females, which would be anything from an open heifer, buying them and just dealing them up and selling them to some other rancher as a set of heifers that he can put a bull on and raise calves out of, um, or buying bred heifers, short bred heifers, and keeping them till they're heavy bred, which means, you know, buying them when they're two or three months bred and keeping them till they're six or seven months bred and then selling them, or buying heavy bred heifers and, and calving them out. So the gestation period on a cow is roughly nine months. So, um, you know, we might buy something that was seven or eight months bred, keep them a few months and calve them out. We might buy some older cows and, and calve them out or buy some pears, just whatever we thought we could turn a dollar on. And we've been doing that for the last old oh, five or six years, and that's worked good for us. Um, the drought the la last summer, we didn't do much. I didn't trade many. I had one set of heifers this year. Um, and then we've got the sheep that are really doing good for us. And, we're, and we've got a bunch of lambs on the ground right now, and we're getting ready to to pull some lambs and try to deal up some little sets of starter flocks is what I want to call them, you know, five to 10 ewes that somebody can buy. And, you know, they're all the same age, they're ready to go and they can they can start their operation from there. Just get a foothold in, you know. Um, but, <clears throat> oh, back to what I'm doing today. So so we, we got to get Clancy's haircut and then we're going to go look at some steers and we're going to get our steers from the man that Clancy's been getting his steers from for the last few years and Kylie got her commercial steers from. My mentor, a man, uh, Mr. Littlefield, he's got a handful of calves that aren't going to be able to go on the program that he normally sells his calves to, and, uh, you know, maybe just an excess of them or something like that. So we're going to go look through his steers. They're going to be Angus calves, uh, sired by 44 Farms Angus bulls, specifically selected for their carcass characteristics, um, their, their weaning weights, their, their, uh, their marbling and all that kind of stuff like that. So... 
the calves that we've been feeding for years, we're just going to get some more of those and put them on feed. So kind of what we're, what our goal is, and uh, this is going to be the first time I share it with anybody other than Erica and the kids that we've been talking about is we would like to be able to start selling boxed beef. Um, you know, have it USDA inspected, process at a USDA inspected plant, um, labeled under bar seven beef and sell to the public because, uh, you know, I think we raise or we're, we're going to feed a excellent product that's going to make a lot of ha families happy. And, uh, you know, I think I can sell it for just a hair more than what, you know, I think I can sell somebody hamburgers all the way up to T-bones for not much more than what you could just buy a hamburger at the grocery store. So, um, but we're still in the infant, infant stages of that. Um, our goal this year in 2024 is to be able to sell about 25 head of calves, 25 steers. So um, we've already sold five this year, which they were holdovers from last year, the ones that we just put in the in the feedlot pen to finish there. So I want to feed out 20 more this year. So the goal is to, to go this afternoon and ride through those cattle and look at them and, and decide how many Richard can stand to let go of and how many we can stand to put on feed. Um, I'm thinking somewhere between 10 and 15 head right now. And if we could make that work, that's why I'm going to put in that feedlot little system over there. And it's, I say feedlot, I, that fence line feeder, because I want to give those calves that whole trap back there um, and not really shut them down into a small feedlot type con confinement pen. You know, that, that'll be way, way more room than they really need back there. So that's the plan, guys. But while I'm waiting on Clance to get his schoolwork done, I sent him in to do his schoolwork while we're waiting to go get his hair cut before we go check on the calves. This garden area that we set up for Erica last year, or for the family, um, is right next to this coastal field, and that coastal kind of came up over the through the fence and got up here and started growing all in my in my garden area right here. I'm gonna flip y'all around and get let you see. So here, here guys, we've got this kind of really like a creek gravel kind of stuff, and it sets up. I mean, it is hard as a rock, but got a few weeds growing right there no problem but right here this is this is coastal bermuda grass growing up in here and it's kind of took over all over there so i got me one of these handy dandy weed burners and we're going to burn that that grass off today while i'm waiting on plants and um that'll get us started get us ready for next year or the getting ready to start our spring gardening we can uh get this like it wants to be the reason i did it this away is because you know if it's wet and stuff i don't want it muddy where you're walking in there trying to do your gardening and when erica's out here doing her stuff so i thought this was the best way to do it and it's worked good so far but we just need to get it ready for the for this next year so with that said i'm going to burn off the dry grass today and and normally you know moving forward I would just be sure that I stayed on top of what I was supposed to be doing, and every couple of days, every couple of weeks, I would round up this this gravel to make sure that nothing else grows on it. But I know there's a lot of folks out there that don't like Roundup, so here's your opportunity to give me some kind of a home remedy, some kind of a home mix that's non-toxic. I mean, I don't, I think you can drink Roundup and it wouldn't hurt you, but you know, I mean some. Some folks in California that get cancer from breathing regular air or drinking water or anything, you know, have made it ruined a lot of stuff for the rest of us. Not all you Californians don't. Everybody get butt hurt, but they're just, you know, the state the state of California is a wreck. I mean, it's pitiful, and and stuff they do out there affects the whole rest of the nation. And there are a bunch most of their lawmakers out there are morons. I hope that didn't hurt anybody's feelings. If it did, I don't. It's all right. You'll get over it. But. Um, long story short, so if you want to sh give me an idea of what's the better way to do something besides putting Roundup on the ground to kill weeds and stuff, here's your chance. Drop it down in the comment section. So I'm going to assemble this little hooter doodle. This is going to screw in. Whoa. Come here now. This is going to screw into here. Like such, and that'll screw into my my propane bottle. That'll that's that collar stays sl slick like that. 
And then this right here is going to be your valve end. This is where you're going to set your... I probably should put some tape on this, but we'll see. And I think that's going to be threaded right there. Screw it in on right there. Just like that. And then you just turn your turn your knob turn it on right here. That's why he's off. That's off. This thing even came with a striker. That's pretty nice. Strike it up. We're gonna burn it off. Let me go get my let me go get me a propane bottle. It's warming up rather quickly, guys. I'm gonna take his coat off also. I'll be right back. Alright, y'all. So uh I changed my mind. I'm gonna go ahead and put some I'm gonna put some stuff on here, some tape. Do it right, I guess. So I'm gonna wrap me some of this. And I know this probably ain't the right kind, but it'll be alright. If y'all don't tell nobody I won't. Alright, so put a little tape on there. That'll help prevent some leaks. Do I have the right tools to do this? No. I can't find my little crescent wrenches in there. In the shop. Clance has been in there. Even though he's got his own toolbox, he still decides he needs to be in mine quite a bit. So Maybe this will catch. I don't know if this will... This pipe vice deal here. I think it's too big, y'all. No, maybe if I get it down in there. Maybe if I get it down in there. Maybe. It don't need much. I think it just really needs to be hand tight. But that's good enough. Good enough. We don't have to put any on these threads because it's got that little O-ring right there that'll push in there and seal. But on this guy here, we need to put some. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I thought I heard a door open. Somebody's somebody coming out here. Might be old E Dog. All right. Now then, let's just give it the old college try and see how it works. Let's see if we can do this without blowing anybody up. Let's see what we got here. Contact. Pretty disappointed in that, guys. I wanted something a lot. This is pretty disappointing, y'all. We're going to see if this bottle doesn't feel empty. I think that bottle's got plenty in it, but. That ain't no count right there, I can tell you for sure. This thing shows a big old blue flame shooting out of all these. Maybe I'm using it wrong. Let me go get another bottle, make sure. I mean, this thing shows this thing shooting a flame out like you can't believe. So let me go get another bottle. All right, guys. That was a problem. We didn't have enough pressure in that tank. Because listen now. Now we got some flame. Much better, but which they, they this company's done a good job. This Red Dragon, made in the USA, not sponsored, but just looking at it, I mean, um, you need this little deal right here, this little squeeze handle adapter, so you can just give it a little. When you don't need it, you let off. So, all right, I'm more satisfied than I was earlier. So good deal there. All right, well I'm gonna get to work burning some of this grass off around here, and when I get done, I'll. Let y'all take a look and see if I did a good job or not. Well, y'all, I guess let's see what we can tear up, huh? What we can. Now, my mainest thing here is I'm going to try to make sure I don't get too close to these beds. 
and burn the paint. I'd be in big trouble then. I like that. I'm working good. I might already get a get a water hose, reckon. I won't even put it out right next to these. But yeah, that works good. I like that. I like that. All right. Well, y'all can stay along if you want to. If you don't, flip over. Well, let's give y'all a little look here. So you can see it's burning it off pretty good. And it's really not even, ain't done anything to those flower beds or the raised garden beds. So I'm pretty satisfied. I'm gonna kind of continue to work around these, these beds here up to there. Not much over here, just a little bit, but get them done. And then worst part is over here on this side get it knocked out and we'll go from there. When I get done, I'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, so a couple of things. We just got through riding around looking through some cattle and number one, um, I accidentally did not grab my camera when we got out to go film, to go look for these things, these calves, these steers. So I didn't get any footage of that, but it was just, it probably wouldn't have been very good anyways it's just bouncing around a bunch of rocky old pastures looking at stuff and um but we, we did get to look at a good many cattle and a handful of steers and heifers i think right now for the program that we're wanting to do i think they're just a tad too light but i'm going to do some pencil and some figuring and see where i think we'll be if we went ahead and got them um I really want to start with some calves that weigh between six and seven hundred pounds and i think these are going to be about 500 to five 50 so they're a little bit too about 100 pounds too light um but we're going to do some penciling and figuring on that and then we'll go from there so that's about it for our day it's getting dark we're fixing to drive home so there won't be much any more filming going on there so um i'm going to close this video out me and clans we're going to say thank you guys for watching um got any questions or anything drop them down there in the comments y'all keep ranching and we appreciate your, your your views and your likes and your comments and your questions and we just thank y'all so much. Have a good one.